Oh. Hey guys, this is J I'm JR, this is Boots, and over here is Dukina. And today, we're going to be painting Albedo and Sucrose from Genshin Impact. Although, that's not quite how today's project started out. I had a few concepts that I went through before settling on something that I think we're going to have a lot of fun with. The Albedo suggestion comes from Alexandra Johansson in the comment section. Thank you very much, this was a great idea. I'm so glad that I finally got around to this project. It's going to be a lot of fun, I know already. Although I am expecting some challenges because Albedo is a distant and almost like somewhat deadpan kind of character. It's going to be interesting. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. The first place I started was nailing down how I wanted to draw Albedo in my art style. I went through several drafts here trying out different poses and I almost moved forward with Albedo painting a canvas. But that lacked the emotion I wanted to put behind this painting and was also far too similar to the reference art. But none of this process was wasted effort. Even if it results in a complete failure, practice is always useful. So I decided that if painting Albedo by himself isn't working for me, then it's time to bring in a second character. And boy, was that the right decision. I instantly fell in love with the concept I came up with this time. Since I have Sucrose taking the lead in this sketch, we can allow Albedo to stay in character while still being crucial to the emotional core of the painting. To communicate the sweet and affectionate atmosphere between these two, Sucrose has her arm around Albedo, pulling him close while she tackles him out of the chair he's sitting in, <laughs> which we can't see because it's out of frame, but I really do like this pose. I'm excited to see where it goes. Also, by tilting our perspective slightly, the image becomes much more dynamic. By having uh, Sucrose extend her arm to take a picture, we are rationalizing our point of view. I think this might be the first time I've ever acknowledged the observation point of view in this way, but they don't really have cell phones in Genshin Impact to my knowledge, so you know, she just turned on photo mode. <laughs> I'm just imagining canonically that there's a spell that everyone knows to summon a photo orb, <laughs> like, <laughs> like to Luke, middle of a boss fight, this fate of the world's at stake. Oh man, I gotta take a photo real quick. <laughs> Let me set up my tripod. Oh, that would actually make a f hilarious animation. Boss just squishes him at the end. Ra Uchu, hope I'm saying that right, probably not, asks about the lighting on the clothes and face coloring. And that's a topic that's handled throughout the painting process. So it's a bit, it's a bit difficult to cover in this format, but it does all start right here. I'm using grayscale to ensure my painting starts with some solid contrast. It's a traditional art technique that I've recently taken a liking to, so expect to see a lot of it in my paintings going forward. That said, I've put my own spin on it to take advantage of layers and digital painting. It's not perfect, but by merging grayscale painting with what I usually call my flat color stage, I can rapidly assemble and experiment with different lighting angles. If you want to try this technique out yourself, use a luminosity blending mode to apply it to your other layers. And when you're happy with the results, clipping mask the grayscale layer to each flat color layer independently before merging each set separately. Basically what I'm doing on screen right now. Now I can hear what some of you are thinking. I put a lot of effort into keeping Albedo in character, but I have Sucrose behaving impulsively. To explain this, I have Sucrose holding an elixir with unknown side effects, as well as some exaggerated blush lines to communicate her mental state. To keep the terminology YouTube friendly, we'll just consider her cognitively compromised for the rest of this painting. Getting started on the eyes, I want to take a minute to highlight and compliment the original color scheme for these two characters. Because it's well thought out how Albedo's and Sucrose's designs match. 
Not diving into specific colors, Sucrose has blue hair and a blue vision, while Albedo has yellow hair and a yellow vision. But Albedo has blue eyes, which match Sucrose's color scheme, while she has yellow eyes, which match Albedo's. It's a it's a fun and clever way of visually connecting these two characters. One that we can potentially learn from and use in a future original character project. Before moving up to the hair, let's briefly talk about coloring the face. Saying briefly is funny because this is a complex topic that could get its own tutorial, but I'll try to cover a couple of pointers. Try not to stay on one color hue. A face has a surprising amount of color variation. Picking a primary shadow color and highlight color can give you a place to start laying out the basic shape of the face. Still, you'll need to add flushness to the cheeks and subsurface scattering along the edges of the highlights before the design will start to look alive. I'll go over the details of subsurface scattering later in this video. It can also be extremely beneficial to build a collection of color swatches sampled from various faces. That, that particular step comes in handy for me all the time. In fact, you can see my color swatch collection every time I open my color picker. I fall back on it whenever I can't decide what color to use when painting skin. Now, a lot of you have asked me how I go about painting hair. I always start with the rough shape. From there, you can use a clipping mask or alpha lock to add detail without things getting messy. A solid place to start is laying out an estimate of your eventual color range. Simply put, start dropping in highlights and shadows roughly where they'll go. Next, add some texture by painting back and forth with a hard round brush, or a textured round brush if you'd prefer but you do need to follow the flow of the hair. The idea is to be building a foundational pattern that you can follow with increasing layers of detail. Since this is an offshoot of an anime art style, the hair should primarily be gathered in clumps. One way to accomplish this look is to use the selection tool to encircle a hair clump and then use a soft brush to paint in a dark edge. The results should be just like you see on screen, with one side having a sharp, defined edge, and the other a soft gradient. The hair now has its basic shape and definition, and the order in which you add more detail becomes increasingly up to artist preference. But you'll want to focus more on smaller hair strands, some of which will deviate from the larger clumps, and others will become accents to the highlights and shadows. It's at this point, if you were painting the additional texture on a second layer using a clipping mask, you'll want to merge them together. Now, I know from experience that if you're the type to avoid merging layers, being told to merge layers to make things easier isn't exactly convincing. But trust me, because I used to be that person with 200 plus layers per project. I realized that my refusal to merge layers came from a fear of being unable to make alterations later. But I let that go when I accepted that no matter how foobar a layer gets, I can always fix it with a repaint. Nowadays, I use between 15 and 30 layers, and I paint texture additions on new layers or duplicate a layer to create a checkpoint. But as soon as I'm happy with the results, I eliminate redundancy. Some of the most beautiful detail in my hair technique is how shiny the final results look. I do this by including streaks of contrast that get darkest right before lines of highlight. But don't make the contrast line too perfect. It helps to have some dark strands go into the highlights and highlight strands dip into the shadows. I repeat this pattern until I feel the hair looks good, painting back and forth. Now, call me oblivious, but I legitimately didn't notice that Sucrose has animalistic ears until I took a closer look at her. They're just so cute <laughs> and much more downplayed than typical animal ears on a character. But even that displays a body language that tells us about the character. 
adding quirks and physical features can be a great place to start building a foundation for a character. No single trait needs to define a character's personality, but you can use everything from wardrobe to body language to help form a first impression. Next, Lennox Williams Art asks how I handle painting the potion. The first thing to acknowledge is that the glass vial has a thickness, and that shows most prominently at the edge, where we include a darker line tinted to either green or blue, unless being shifted by a colored light. Next, we have to come back in along the same edge and add highlights, some of which will refract through the glass itself painted on top of the dark line we added and other highlights will catch on the outer surface of the glass. If you struggle with this, it can be extremely helpful to use the glass bottle or a photo of such as an example. Continuing on, we need to have the same light sources affect the liquid inside the vial. This part might look intimidating, but it's actually a lot simpler than you might think. There are only three primary factors when dealing with lighting an opaque liquid. What it looks like where the light hits, where the light doesn't hit, and where the light shines through. Here we have two light sources affecting the liquid. One off camera to the right that causes the front facing surface to catch light, and one directly in the background with the open door, causing a powerful subsurface scattering effect. I use a color dodge on both the brush and layer to paint in this glow. I then use an eraser to form a shadow for the hand holding the vial. Subsurface scattering is caused when light shines through a surface with limited transparency. Skin is one of the more common places you can see this effect. For example, if you place your fingers in front of a flashlight, the warm tones you'll see are a result of subsurface scattering. But it can also be seen in everything from noses and ears to tree leaves and semi-opaque liquids. At this point, I still wanted to draw a connection between the potion and Sucrose's exaggerated behavior, and I thought it might be cute to have a Side Effects Unknown label. It also adds a little detail to the painting, which can help improve an image. I alpha locked the strings so that I could easily paint in some shadows to add depth, and I used a fancy default Procreate font that still looked handwritten for the text. And I could have stopped there, but the label felt plain and boring, and I prefer my details with more flair, so I added in some scroll work. Nothing over the top, just a few squiggly lines to add some character. In a painting like this where you're trying to tell a story, details go a long way to making the scene feel more grounded, and one of the fastest and most substantial ways to add detail is dropping a photo into the background and using blending modes, blur, and repaints to manipulate the image to fit the composition. Details go a long way to making the scene feel more grounded. The picture I used is actually of my room. I'm a bit of a halo nerd, but regardless of visible branding, once you add the Gaussian blur, it all becomes abstract shelves and items. I went with a vivid light blending mode to combine the photo with the basic background I had before, but I would highly recommend cycling through the various blending modes before settling on one for a different painting. Also know that dialing down the opacity is often very useful. Don't feel the need to stick to one photo either. Use as many as you think are necessary to composite a good background. You can always worry about merging them later. Just make sure to keep an eye on the perspective of the scene and your photos and take the time to line them up so that everything matches. It will look so much better in the end if you do. I decided that Sucrose holding the elixir was crowding Albedo's space on the canvas. My solution was to rethink the concept to have Albedo holding the elixir instead and add in Sucrose's hand tussling Albedo's hair. This way, the scene still communicates the same emotions, but now Albedo has more presence, taking an active role in the story by picking up the potion himself. If you ever get yourself into a pinch where you just don't like the way something looks, there's always the option of repainting. <laughs> That's a step that I am more than familiar with, and you shouldn't feel bad about having to try again. 
Often, a second take will help to clear things up anyway. Now, I've gotten several questions about how I paint gold and visions. A vision being the medallion accessory Genshin Impact characters carry around. But before we dive into painting the vision, I do want to mention that I have a gold texturing tutorial where I go over the basics of how to paint gold. I'll throw a link to that up in the card. First off, whether we start with the gold or the jewel doesn't really matter, but I'm going to start with the jewel. When light hits a transparent surface, like crystal, it both reflects off the surface and shines through it. The surface reflection should desaturate the color as it gets brighter, and the inner refraction will shine through with more color at times, almost appearing to glow. Color dodge comes in handy for getting the right look. The separation that you give the two highlights will help to define the thickness of the jewel. After that, I like to add some extra color spots and even darken the contrast along the outer edge. Know that the rules do change a bit when dealing with gems with sharp cuts, but we don't have an example of that today, so I'll leave that explanation for another video. Next up, the gold will typically get brighter and more desaturated with increasing light levels. But to start defining where the highlights go, you'll need a solid understanding of the shape you're working with, the direction of your light source, and any surrounding elements that might cast additional shadows. Now you might notice that I've already included shadows from the hair on both the gold and gem. And it's shadowing like that. When one object in your scene affects the lighting on the objects around it, that helps everything feel more tangible. Meanwhile, we can begin to see the gold shape as that formless blob that I had before starts to take on definition. I'm picturing this as two wings with a leaf in the center. But to bring that design to life, we need to keep lighting, contrast, and reflections in mind. For instance, when gold reflects more gold, the color gets darker, richer, and slightly redder. But if it reflects the well-lit open room, it will be brighter and a more desaturated color. And of course, if it reflects the light source directly, it will be at its brightest. But I withhold maxing out the brightness into pure white until I add glinting highlights, mainly along the edges in one of the last steps. Now, much later in the painting process, when I come back in to add the symbols, I use an Add Blending Mode on a new layer and sketch them in, along with any additional effects I decide to add at that point. Doubling back to the comment from earlier, let's talk about the fabric. Now, clothing overall is far too broad of a topic to cover in its entirety. Too many variables, but I can go over a handful of techniques I use in this video in hopes that you find them useful. Getting started, using a soft glow brush and the color of your light source, you can create a gentle gradient across the fabric. This can help influence your choice in color as we advance, and is a great place to start your lighting. I'm visualizing this undergarment as a soft, low thread count, cotton-like material. It's a light fabric, so it will gather and bunch easily especially right under the arms where the bow tightens up the material. The inclusion of seams is also important, and if you have a line of frills that requires hemming, that leaves behind a visible stitch. You can artistically show this by having smaller gathers in the fabric pulling towards the seam, each of which will catch the light on one side and shade the light on the other. Try not to be overly precise, because this can still look good even if you just represent the design in an abstract form. For example, if you look at it in isolation, most of these lines I've drawn are only little squiggles. Now, the blue top that Sucrose is wearing is a much more rigid material, and therefore can be painted much smoother than the undergarment. But even a more rigid material isn't completely immune to having minor stitch marks. Now, when it comes to adding a thread count related texture to a surface, it's one of the few times in a painting I highly recommend using a specific brush. Most of the time you can get by with just a general painting brush, but a low thread count fabric needs a texture brush. Thankfully, if you want this brush that I use here, I offer it for free on my Gumroad store as part of my hair brush set. 
It might be surprising, but it actually works well with hair too. I'll put a link to the brush set in the description. The brush you're looking for is JR Texture Brush 005 Prime. Everything is looking great so far, and now it's time for final lighting to bring everything together. And all done. Finding a sketch that worked for this painting was challenging, but I'm so happy with where we ended up. The whole scene came together exceptionally well between, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, parts of the painting that were like out of focus and the balance between well, lighting on like everything. And here I was so worried about painting two characters that it might be beyond me to balance the painting correctly, but this way Sucrose is the catalyst for the energy and emotion in the scene. And that allows Alberto to stay in character and more reserved. And there's so much story in this scene too that I just love. The background says that we're in an alchemy workshop of sorts, Sucrose's, uh, Cutting loose uh, attitude and exaggerated blush lines say that maybe she drank something that had a bit of a side effect. Uh, reinforced by the fact that Albedo is picking up what's left of an unsealed elixir off the table <laughs> with a questionable warning label. <laughs> uh, while, while that was originally going to be like sucrose holding the elixir, I'm also glad that I chose to have her tussling his hair instead. It still keeps the elixir in the story by having him pick it up, but now he's actually doing something in the scene rather than, you know, hands at his side, sitting there like a board while she tackles him to the ground, which it just, it just felt off. Now, if you ever want to know uh, the value of what I call final lighting with all the blending modes. Just take a look at this. Final lighting on, now off. It changes so dramatically. It's hard to believe that at any part during the painting process that I thought that looked great because that looks good, but I'm sorry, that's great. <laughs> so much atmosphere that rounds out the scene among other final lighting tricks, never underestimate the power of just a little dust in the scene. It, it, it adds so much. I know I've said this before, but I really do think this might be my best painting yet. The emotions are precise and exactly what I wanted. And the scene tells a story. In my mind, I can clearly see the events that led up to this painting. We know these characters from the game. They have obvious, let's say, um, chemistry, <laughs> if you don't mind the double meaning. The two of them would have been working in, a, in the lab and in typical anime rom-com fashion, Albedo would be oblivious to both phrasing and Sucrose's feelings for him and would have said something that in context is work-related, but could also be misinterpreted as him expressing feelings for her. And in a fit of embarrassment and with perfect comedic timing, Sucrose would chug the sizable portion of the potion, the elixir they've been working on. A few minutes and uh, side effects later, we have this adorable scene. And I guess an awareness of what the side effects were. <laughs> <laughs> I still wish I could have worked in a shirtless albedo in this scene, just like ripped. <laughs> I just 
had a hard time reconciling his passive personality with a pose that has him actively showing off his bod. You know, now that I think of it, I probably could have gotten away with having him in a bathhouse and that would have worked. Oh well. Um, when, I, when I came up with this painting, as it is right now, I knew it was worth following through with. And I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out. Maybe I'll double back to the shirtless albedo somewhere down the line, but I won't be painting the same character twice in a row. So that potential sketch will have to wait. Thank you to everyone in the comments section. Zipper VA says, I have a list of artists I want to be like, of similar style to yours. Found you yesterday, and you now belong on that list, Mr. Underrated. Thank you so very much, Zipper. And you know, Mr. Underrated is actually a very clever name. I like that. You know, why not? If you got this far in the video, comment down below, Mr. Underrated. Now that's not Sir Underrated, that's Mr. Underrated and then forward the video to like a hundred friends so that the nickname becomes ironic when I have a million subscribers, if you don't mind. <laughs> of course, if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, let me know down in the comments. I always read every one of them. Also for next week, uh, I haven't decided whether I want a turtle video or a raccoon video. Let me know your thoughts. Anyways, thank you all for joining me today, and in hopes of not always being Mr. Underrated, you can help the channel grow too by sharing videos, forwarding links, subscribing if you haven't already, and when you enjoy a video, like and comment as it helps break through the YouTube algorithm. This channel wouldn't be possible without all of you. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.